thank you so much for joining us today. Really, it means a lot. Um, tell us about All Seated and how you got sure. to where you are today. Sure. All Seated is, in simple terms, an event visualization tool. What we do is we let you see an event before it happens. Uh, we're a SaaS company, meaning we sell the, the software to uh, our customers on a subscription basis. We have over 5,000 paying customers and um, really helping hospitality professionals to do a better job in planning events, selling and marketing their event venues, and showing uh, what an event can look like to their prospective customers and customers. How did you get to All Seated? What, what was your journey to becoming the CEO of this thing? Sure. I was an investment banker for a long time, probably too long. I started my career at Morgan Stanley, then Lehman Brothers back in the days. A good friend of mine from Tel Aviv University had reached out to me about 10 years ago and uh, showed me his cool new product that he wrote. Uh, I helped him to obviously raise some money because he's my buddy. And about a month into it, he basically offered me the, the job as CEO. He's, uh, he's a tech guy. He was the CTO of the company. And uh, the other partner is Sandy, uh, which was the C she was the CMO of the company. And you spent some time in the Israeli Defense Force, right? Like you, did you just, it says here, like you served three years in that, which is incredible. What did you learn d during that experience? So I did. I was three years in the Israeli Defense Forces. I was in Army intelligence, meaning I was not running on the hills with a gun in my hand. I was yeah. really in an office environment. Uh, super exciting times because my unit, uh, that is kind of the NSA equivalent uh, in, in Israel, oh, okay. the amazing technologies in the 70s and 80s. I was there in the late 80s. And so all these amazing technologies were developed there. And, and uh, my unit now is kind of a huge ecosystem provider to uh, startups in Israel. Yeah. So uh, what had you go into banking for all those years and what did you learn in, during that experience? Particularly like, uh, were you there during the Lehman collapse at all or what, did you did you get to avoid that? I was not. I actually my last year at Lehman Brothers was 2002, about six years, six years before the, the collapse. And I was not in any part that had to do anything with that. I was doing investment banking. Uh, tech M&A to be particular. So really, you know, my journey to all seed has always been uh, involving technologies in one way or another. Um, doing tech banking is is part of that. But I think you asked me what I learned in, in that business. I think uh, investment banking really provides you with the ability to look at things from a strategic perspective. You get to look at the numbers, you get to look at what drives the business, uh, how it stacks against competition. Uh, you get to understand funding and you get to understand the, I don't want to say the final stage of the business because that sounds harsh, but really when the business is preparing for an exit and being involved in that process is very valuable because you can see all the value drivers there. Yeah, that that is fascinating. Uh, at CEO.com, we talk a lot about self-leadership. When you hear that, what does that mean to you? How do you uh, apply that into your daily life? I think that leadership is something that um, involves a few things. It's not just one thing. Um, it is a lot of self-discipline, uh, you know, avoiding sometimes the the temptations of of the pleasantries of the of the of the uh, present. I think it really involves having something bigger than you, a dream, a vision, something that's bigger than you, and getting people with you into that. I think that is critical. Being able to communicate something big to people is is absolutely necessary. And more than anything, leadership is not about managing people, telling them what to do. It's about, uh, in my opinion, the ability to uh, direct people through your own actions. I think many companies, what they see, many, uh, you know, especially people in companies, when they see the leader does doing something, this is what they typically follow. And so it's self-leadership is about setting an example and, and taking the values that you believe in and really showing them through actions to others. What does a typical day look like for you? Um, well, I'm an early riser. I wake up around five o'clock in the morning every day. Uh, starting my calls with Israel, then Europe. Um, there's a lot to get done in those early hours of the day. 
Uh, and then just getting into my day, getting into um, typically, you know, the thing that really needs to get done that day. Uh, the next thing is um, I do take some time to work out, uh, run. I think that's really important uh, for anyone that is uh, in in leadership position is, you know, take some time for yourself and also enjoy some things, um, you know, uh, like playing music and things like that. How do you decide what to spend your time on? Like the, that important thing of the day, how do you decide what that is? It, you know, it could be an external situation that needs to, you know, a crisis of some sort, you know, the pandemic would be a good example of that. Something that happens, maybe, you know, something that happens with a customer that you need to get involved in, or it could be something uh, internal, something that you decide, okay, we need to do fundraising now. And this is where I'm going to be spending most of my energy in. And, and that really takes a significant portion of the day because that involves uh, getting that um, set up and, and making sure that everything is going towards that. So it's it's pretty much a, um, a combination of those two things. For the event space, it's kind of interesting. I wonder uh, what you think about the rise of artificial intelligence and how that might affect your industry. I mean, it's going to affect every industry in some way, but it's really interesting. How does it affect yours? 100%. I think, I think artificial intelligence is going to affect every industry, every company, every person out there. It already is in, in some ways. Um, it is absolutely amazing what this can do. And, and the potential is it is amazing. We have already started to incorporate AI in our products. But I also think that in addition to tech companies incorporating AI in their products and in their future, I think that what future products, what they need to be doing is also uh, embracing the power of AI and bringing that into their own operations of the company. I think that in the events industry per se, um, there is a lot of things that are very manual, very mechanical that absolutely could use artificial intelligence to save time for people. People are extremely busy in hospitality and events. Uh, help them manage their day better. Help them visualize things better. So we're we're on top of it. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, what do you read? Like what what is what is um, something you're reading right now? Yeah, you know, a, a recent book that I finished that I think I, for every CEO out there, a must read is Ben Horowitz, um, The Hard Thing About Hard Things. I think yeah. when I read it, it was, I felt that I I was reading my own journey in, in yeah. many ways. It, you know, um, the way he describes his journey, even though, you know, the circumstances and and his access to capital and 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 is way bigger than mine, but many similarities and, and obviously just an awesome journey for him. So I would absolutely recommend that to people. How have you defined culture in your company? What is all seated's culture? You know, culture is an interesting thing. I think uh, it's like meeting a person and you meet someone and, Oh, that person is really smart. That person is funny. That person is actually a little bit crazy. You know, I think, Companies also have cultures and, and it's kind of a, a personality uh, of some sort. I think our culture has always been from, from day one, one of innovation. Uh, we've always looked to to solve big problems and, and solve things that looked like they were very, very tough to solve. Um, I think we, we obviously had to evolve that instead of just focusing 100% on innovation, which is what companies should do in, in its early days, um, really bring more discipline, more processes, and more uh, revenues into the mix so that you can obviously grow and survive. I think that the other thing is um, a culture is something that obviously should evolve with a company. Whereas, you know, when you're five people, it's it it's a certain culture. When you're 100 people, you obviously have to do things a little bit different, uh, if not very different. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you manage the, the culture as, as you expand and as you grow the team, what does, I mean, how do you maintain that? Or maybe you don't, maybe the culture has to change at that point. It, it, it does have to change. And if you do not change and adapt to changing realities, either internally because you've grown and you're going to, you're going to basically um, not scale. If you don't set processes, if you don't, 
bring the right people to set those processes, set those initiatives and manage them, I think you're not going to survive. And I think it's very different to get from zero to one, from one to 10, and obviously from 10 to 100. And I think that the uh, that journey, every leader should absolutely look at the people and the things that are uh, help the things that are available to that leader in order to make those changes. What are all seated's values, and how did you come up with those? Um, you know, it, it's one of those things where you start and and you kind of look at yourself at some point, and like, okay, you know, you know, we're this, we're innovative, we're actually very we take work very seriously, but we don't take ourselves too seriously. I think we can make fun of ourselves in, in tough situations. Um, at some points, you, you obviously have to kind of take a step back and really look at, okay, this is what the organization is. And then what do we value? What do we really feel passionate about? And then communicate that, articulate that to the company and articulate that to everyone, the stakeholders and our customers as well. This is who we are. Um, how do you communicate that internally, like your company's mission? How do you communicate that effectively both to the team, customers, the rest of the world? Maybe what's the difference between the three approaches with those three groups? I think that once you define it, uh, it's really important to continue to communicate that to people. I, I think that if there's something that I can say that we haven't done enough of with with that is is communicating more and more of that communicating the mission, the vision, the values. Uh, we've actually done some work recently um, as as about three months ago to really make sure that we are so aligned that we have very clear set of uh, values. And those are, you know, we're innovative, we're fun, we're candid with each other, we're, um, you, you know, we're innovative. All those things are should be written and communicated in a written format and verbally through um you know through management to 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 the organization and i think that also dictates the tone that then everyone in the company should have facing outwards with investors with customers with with all the other stakeholders we also talk a lot about empathy and what the role empathy plays in leadership what are your thoughts on that what role does empathy play huge I think huge. And and I'll be honest, I think it's something that can be learned. Um, if I'm completely honest here, I started my career really thinking mostly about myself. How do I progress? How do I, and you know, in investment banking, it's a very cutthroat business. You really have to be very, you know, thinking about yourself. And I think that as you become more of a leader, as you work more with people and and you understand and, and it's obvious to you that you need to have more empathy, that you need to really look at um, the other person. And, and it doesn't mean that you're not going to make very tough decisions part ways with, you know, many people along the way and make unpopular decisions. It's what you need to do as, as a leader, as a CEO. It's it's a daily thing that you have to make tough decisions and and inform people of those. But you can do, the, you can do them emp- emp- with empathy or you can do them you know, in a mean way, it's your choice and you always have that choice. Mm. Yeah, I like that. I like that it's your choice and you always have that choice. As you look at like the macro economic environment and think about that as your company, how are you feeling going into this year in terms of state of the economy, state of global um, affairs? Because like you're probably a selling all over the world, right? Yes, Yes, we are a global company. We're selling um, in the U.S., in Europe, in the Middle East, in Asia. Um, I, I got to tell you, I hear a lot of things that are, hey, you know, it's going to hit a cliff. I, I see good things. I, I'm very optimistic about where we are. I think that the economy is very robust. Uh, there is a lot of demand for from consumers. There's a lot of demand from businesses where we are. Um, and I think it's going to get better. That's my view. I love it. Um, Is there a moment where you may have failed that kind of shaped who you are as a leader and helped you grow? On a daily basis, you mean? (laughs) (laughs) I think, I think, I absolutely think it's a daily thing. Um, If you're not doing something wrong, 
every day and and you know failing in something maybe small you're not really pushing yourself you're not really being uh, a leader but yes i i do have one of those things where we all see that started um with the intention of being more of a marketplace um we wanted to bring a set of tools to the industry give that for free and then make money through uh vendor matching matching host of events with vendors in the industry that didn't work and we tried that for a couple of years and it didn't work and i think that the lesson for me was at that point i i knew that i really had to make all seated monetize its services or else we're just not you know we're not going to have a business and it was a very tough decision to make and not a very popular one um with other stakeholders in the company but we we made it and and the lesson there was you know it's 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 not just about the decision but it's also about bringing people into that decision and and making sure that they understand that even though they did not support it it's okay for them to now be part of it and i think that that really made us extremely successful going forward Finally, we end every interview with the same question, and that is we believe the chances one gives are just as critical and important as the chances one takes on themselves. When you hear that, who gave you a chance to help you get to where you are today? Um, I, I want to answer this question in, in, a, in, a, in a couple of ways. I think that there is definitely those that gave you a chance, and they could be along the way people that really um, – gave you an opportunity, really made it um, incredible for you. There's also those that did not, and they're equally as important. The ones that said no, the ones that said no in not in a nice way, the ones that didn't believe in you. For people like myself, they're a huge motivator. So I'd like to say thank you to all the people who told me no, because you just made me want to succeed even more. I hate failing. Uh, but I think there's a couple of people actually that with all seated um, that I, you know, I think um, I, I, I'm very appreciative. And those are my former business partners, Daniel and Sandy. I think they asked me to be CEO almost uh, 10 years ago, nine and a half years ago. And um, even though they're not with the company now, I'm very appreciative. I, I think their passion and um and energy and i've learned so much from them i think i'm very appreciative and very thankful for the for the chance again i can't thank you enough for spending some time with us it means the world um you've built an incredible company uh best of luck moving forward and i'm sure we'll see you down the line thank you very much appreciate it